Cubase Pro 9 has made some rather significant optimizations for better workflow on a single screen, such as a laptop. Cubase has always in the past placed different parts of the program in different zones. Most Cubase users are used to having the inspector on the left-hand zone. Uh, right-hand zone was introduced in Cubase Pro 8, which includes the media bay and VST instrument rack. Cubase Pro 8.5 introduced the chord pads in the bottom zone in an editor. So let's see what Cubase Pro 9 adds to this. So we have some standard key conventions to be aware of. So Alt Control on Windows platform and Command Option on the Mac platform. So if I want to open the left zone to expose, I can hit Command Option or Alt Control L to open and close. If I wanted to open the right zone with the VST instruments and Media Bay, Alt Control or Command Option R. My editor can be opened at the bottom where we would have seen the chord pads by hitting Alt Control E. The Cubase transport, which you can turn on and off by hitting F2, the function key 2, sometimes floats around and can sometimes be in the way. So if you hit Alt Control or Command Option T, you can have the transport fixed at the bottom of the screen. Now, if you don't see all of the typical transport functions that you see, you may just have to expose some of them. They'll have an abbreviated appearance here. For instance, if you want to find the control room, go all the way over to the right, and then you can just simply expose or show the control room functionality uh, just by grabbing the, in the right-hand corner here like this. If we wanted to have control over each of the zones, the control setup window used to be in the upper left-hand corner in previous versions. This is migrated now to the upper right-hand corner. We have some macro views as well as where you could just put little check marks to activate and deactivate certain zones. The zones can be navigated quite easily by hitting tab key. So you see the outline in white changes. It's at the bottom zone, the project window zone, as well as the media bay and, and instrument zone. This is important when we want to do zooming. So if I have an edit zone in the bottom, I can zoom in and out independently depending on what the active zone is. So to go forward, I can navigate by hitting the tab key, but if I hit the shift tab, I could go backwards. You can have different functions in each of the zones. Cubase 8, we introduced the visibility settings. So if this is my active zone, I could use Alt Control or Command Option plus the left right arrows to navigate different parts of each of the zones. So if I go to my right zone, I want to toggle between my media bay and the SD instrument rack, just alt control and left right arrows. So let's go back to our edit zone because now we could actually do more than just the chord pads. So if I wanted to see my mix console, I could do that there and it'll always be anchored on top at the bottom. If I wanted to be taller, I could do that. If I wanted to expose different controls here for linking filter views, I could turn that icon on. I could see my faders, my inserts, or sends. We can also, if we scroll over one more tab, whatever I have selected here will show up in my editor. Now the editors are kind of unique and that as we kind of play, we could have different controls. So if I'm looking at MIDI parts, uh, I could actually see some of my, I could see my MIDI data. Now one preference to be aware of, for my taste, this is a little too dark, depending on what you're using for the color scheme. So if you go to the preferences and you want kind of the older color schemes, if you go to preferences, and under event display editors just uncheck that and then you could have kind of the lighter colors depending on 
how you have the color scheme set. You can just change that. So if I wanted my MIDI view to be perfectly in sync with my project window, now as I zoom in one, the other will automatically synchronize just like that. Now I could also have these play independently. So if I wanted them to play perfectly in sync at the zoom level, or let's say I don't want it to be in sync, I could also change my cursor. So let's say if I wanted to select my audio, I could have my bottom editor have a stationary cursor. So if I wanted to just scroll, or if I want the top to scroll normally, and whatever I'm editing in the bottom, have my sample editor. And again, I could resize this if I need it to be bigger. I could also resize my right hand zone here. So sometimes on certain screen resolutions, that's a little too large. So that could be resized. But if I need this to actually be full screen, I could just come right here and we see this little arrow that points upward to the right. I click on that and then I could go into my full screen editor, just like we've had in Cubase for years. So if I select a MIDI part, I could also just go full screen with my MIDI editor and have an independent floating window. So conversely, you could just hit the arrow going down. Now in the MIDI editor, we could also switch between different views. So if I want to see this as my key editor, I can see it as a drum editor or even standard music notation. So I could just see all of my parts right there. One of the other new tabs that's been implemented is a sampler tab. So with the sampler track, so I'm gonna switch my zone here to the right and go to my media bay and I could just take any audio file and just drag and drop. And now at this point, we have a sampler track that I could just play and take audio from my project window, drag and drop. So I could just easily navigate between my chord pads, my sampler track, my editors, whether they're audio or MIDI, scoring or drum, or to be in my mix console as well. And one thing as you're doing editing, the editors themselves have their own tabs. So the sample editor has independent tabs of the inspector. So if I wanted to see my track inspector, I could just click right here. Or as I do this, I could just hit the Alt tab here. And then as we kind of navigate to our different inspectors, like if I want to do very audio here, I could just say, let's select the very audio tab. So this would be my channel inspector. And now I could see all the sample editing here. So if I want to do just a pitch and warp on this and do my very audio editing, it's no problem. So as you can see, the flexibility of the new zones and being able to navigate very quickly through different key combinations and with your mouse can make working on a single screen and just make your overall work experience so much more focused. So as you can see, the new improvements in Cubase Pro 9 are really pretty incredible.